making the most of HubSpot video and Vidyard. Um, we've chosen this topic because of the spread of video, really, as I'm sure everybody will be aware of. There were stats doing the rounds for the past 10 years or so that by 2018, 80% of internet traffic would be made up of video. And that stat was always there saying, um, you know, this is the year to do video. This is the year to do video. Everybody's going to be doing video. Um, everybody's expecting video. And around two or three years ago, that tipping point came where the expectation to use video became the norm. And um, I'm not even credited who this stat was from because I can't, I don't know who said it first, but it's been so widely adopted at marketing talks that um, it's just sort of a given that that was the stat. And when I, I come from a written content background and saw the growth of video and the accessibility of video become more prevalent to the point where um, it got to a place where you could use video and still be ahead of the curve. And then now we're at a place in 2021 where we're probably in the back end of the late majority of businesses using video. So every I think every client we've worked with, for example, has done at least one video project. Um, and it used to be four, four years ago, it used to be a bit of a novelty still. Um, but it's so normalized is using video for various reasons that even if you're just doing marketing videos now, um, you're part of the late majority and, and late to the party. So it's, it's, this is a phrase Ricky uses, it's, it's table stakes to use video. It's the expectation now for marketing. So if you look at HubSpot video and getting the most from HubSpot video, you want to be finding a tactic or a strategy uh, which helps you get ahead of that curve on the screen and, and do something a little bit different, stand out from the crowd. Um, and that can still be doing marketing videos. But what I want to explore uh, this morning is three tactics to help you do more with HubSpot video and perhaps Vidyard if it fits your scenario um, that helps you convert existing web traffic, create evergreen content and provide an on-brand experience. So these three, these three tactics and strategies will help you do video like everybody else is, but better and do something a little bit different that will help you not just be more, more noise in the mix, uh, which is what happens when um, more and more companies do video. It's like blogging was four or five years ago where we reached sort of peak blogging output where everybody had started blogs and inbound was spreading uh, as a methodology and you had to find a way to get ahead of the curve. So that's something I want to explore. And then just some random, uh, well, not random, but some uh, just final tips um, that we've learned over the years of doing video with HubSpot Video and Vidyard with our clients. So I wanted to pass those on. And then just before I jump into that, a bit of housekeeping first, because there's a bit of um, ambiguity between what HubSpot video powered by Vidyard is compared to what Vidyard is as its own platform. Um, so I just want to dive into that first. And the reason I'm talking about this is I'm Paul. Um, my job title is Head of Growth at Digital 22, but one of the things I'm responsible for is um, the Vidyard and video relationships that we have. Um, and manage the content team and the video team till recently. So I um, come from a content and video background. So that's I'm in these tools all day, every day. So firstly, like I said, HubSpot Video is powered by Vidyard. And then you've got a separate tool called Vidyard, which um, you can have as an option as well. So and there's sometimes some confusion um, from customers and colleagues as well, when they start at the agency of, of what that means um because there's a bit of overlap uh, they're not quite the same thing so whilst hubspot video is a great feature um it's only one of your two options when when you come to using vidyard so you've got hubspot video powered by vidyard which enables you to have a vidyard portal a vidyard account uh, and then that is what's powering your hubspot use of video inside the hubspot platform but then you've got this other option of vidyard as a um, a standalone video platform for all different purposes and all different um, and similar features. So extra features if you have a Vidyard account. And there's different use cases for um, all different companies. So it depends on what your goals are and your scale of video and 
little things like what you sh you're making of HubSpot. So if you are using, if you are using HubSpot um, Pro and Enterprise or uh, CMS, uh, you'll you'll qualify your account will qualify for a HubSpot video um, feature add-on. So it's like Sales Pro or things like that, where you get meeting links if you have a certain uh, tier on HubSpot, if you have a certain account on HubSpot. HubSpot Video will allow you to embed um, 250 videos. Um, you can use just HubSpot features that you're familiar with, that you're in, using every day. It links in the background to a Vidyard portal, and that is what's powering things. You can do things all in HubSpot, like add CTAs, um, embed just inserting a video like you'd insert an image on a blog or a landing page you can do all that inside hubspot another option perhaps for different use cases uh, would be to have vidyard as a standalone feature and that as you'd expect with a paid add-on it offers a bit more flexibility it offers um, the ability to embed outside of hubspot pages um, it gives you control over the playback experience more cta freedoms that kind of thing um, but it all depends on what you're trying to do and what your scenario is. But if you look at your HubSpot account, um, you'll see if you've if you're on Pro or Enterprise or have the CMS, you can turn on HubSpot Video if you haven't already, and then that means you can then start um, embedding videos now and hosting them in a place where you can track the data, uh, track the analytics and the user behavior, the the contact interactions with it um, a lot better than you could do with third-party platforms so if you haven't turned that on and played with it it's under the settings um apps and integrations and then you can just choose it like you would salesforce or canva or any of the other integrations that hubspot have but basically um when it comes to making a choice if your website's not on hubspot and you want to do bigger fancier things that's when there's a good use case for vidyard if you are just using landing pages on hubspot um then you could probably, and don't have more than 250 videos you can um, make good use of HubSpot video so if you want to go all in on the video you might want to consider video but HubSpot video definitely is a great place to start so bit of um context there and it's just a question that i was asked prior to the talk and it's something i get asked a lot what the difference is between the two um if you've got any more specific questions about those feel free to just uh, send me a message once the talk's finished the tactics then to get the most out of HubSpot Video and Vidyard, but they also apply to your video strategy generally anyway. Something we always do is start with converting existing web traffic. And the, the principle of this comes from the 80-20 rule where you can get 80% of your impact from the first 20% of your effort. And the 80% of your website success comes from your top 20% performing pages is the, is the effect of that. So you what we always do when we come to choosing um, content audit or which blogs to optimize or which website pages we should keep for a launch pad of a growth driven design website or where to start with video would be to look at the top 20% um, performing pages and we'll start there and we will convert the traffic on those pages because they'll be bringing in more than likely 80% of the website's conversions or 80% of the website's traffic. So if we can convert that traffic first we don't need to do a video for every page we don't need to spend as long trying to get a video for all of this content we can target the pages that are actually bringing in 80 percent of the traffic and we can convert those people first quicker and faster less time less money less effort um, and that is the place we always start on this like basic approach this top level approach of how we approach video and the reason I wanted to mention that was because speaking to clients over the years who perhaps your if you're our point of contact at a client and your bosses are pushing for this and you've got sign off spend for video but they've always wanted to do that case study or they've always wanted to do that um documentary about a company they've always wanted to do that certain video they've had in mind what we see a lot is people trying to start at number three on that um, graphic there on screen. They want to get the brand known. They want a video that you can play in reception and show off on LinkedIn as well. Whereas if you're on a, a budget or a time constraint or um, 
have inbound goals and sales targets that you want to target first, that play is going to take a lot longer. Um, the first place to start is at the other end of the scale. And you, the video use of video can have an enormous effect on click-through rate on pages just from using simple videos. And then after that, just like you would with any other form of inbound content, you can start filling up the buyer's journey from um, sales opportunity to sales qualified, up to marketing qualified, up to attracting people and engaging them for the first time, um, and then uh, delighting existing customers or attracting new new visitors. So filling that funnel um, after converting existing traffic. How to do that, I uh, mentioned it a little bit, was um, what, a simple page conversion video is what we're talking about when we're talking about improving click-through rate. So if you go to our website or um, a couple, couple of our clients who are on inbound video retainers, the, be the simplest thing to do is if you've got a, a page and you know what the call to action of that page is, all the copy will be aiming for somebody to do that. But people prefer video. People are so used to seeing video. So a simple video of um, one person on screen, one shot, reading a 30 to 60 second version of the page, saying what the page is about, what you get out of it. But if you want to jump straight to whatever the call to action is, just fill in this form uh, at the end of the video. And you can have a CTA at the end of the video, or you can plan where you, obviously you'll know where your video is going to be shown. Just fill in the form on the side of this page and you can access whatever it is that you want people to access. But doing that has benefits for the user because it's quicker rather than spending four or five minutes scrolling through a page and reading it and skimming it and seeing if not really taking in all the information. Actually, you've got a video. Your two competitors who I was browsing against didn't. I'll watch your video. And then at the same time, you're putting across a bit of your personality. You're putting a face, a voice and a name to the page rather than just copy. And you're also physically asking them, verbally asking them to take action. So they're more likely to do it. Um, so it is a great benefit that we've seen. There's the general consensus is that it can have an effect of upwards of um, 50 to somewhere 50 to 80% on page conversion rates. We've seen it firsthand at 66% increase on form submissions once we'd established this tactic uh, across websites. The other thing to make sure you're getting the best out of HubSpot video um, and Vidyard is to create evergreen educational content. And I'm probably preaching to the converted here, um, but it's a principle to make sure you're still applying to your videos. So like I said, a lot of conversations I have with clients are to create these one-off videos. People think it's, if, if you're new to doing video for business, the corporate video, the case, the case study that's an about us video as well, and the one that we're really going to hang our hat on and spend a few thousand pounds on, it needs to be all these different things. Actually, has a short shelf life because that, that person will leave the company, that reference will become out of date or whatever. So if you can take a same approach uh, to video as you do to written content and create evergreen educational content, that's going to have a big effect. But the other benefits are that doing an edited or what are called produced videos take time, effort and resource. So you want to get it right and get the most investment out of that video project as you can. So if you choose the right sorts of content, you can really maximize that effort and really, really get maximum return on your investment as well, because it's usable for longer. There's longevity to it and it's going to be the same principles as inbound blogging. It's going to be contribute into your traffic sources, your conversion and your uh, web traffic well into the future rather than a short lived one push video campaign or an advertising video, which still has a place and still very fun projects to work on. But what we're talking about here is getting the most out of HubSpot video, your blogs, your landing pages and your inbound approach. How we do that, I've put an example on screen of um, an event we did. Uh, or that we do every year that we did in 2020 love inbound um it's our own event that's just free talks educational talks all things inbound we film all of the talks and they go and live on a standalone video on our video hub where you can watch 
the events on catch up, uh, but they're also there in the future um, for anyone to search them. But we also get proactive with chopping out snippets of those videos. We take the audio only and turn that into a podcast. We make blogs that discuss the, the talking points from, from the talk. Um, we email it out to our database as a look what we've just released. And then also it gets those snippets or those full talks or the blogs also get used in email nurturing. So that one filmed evergreen piece of content then gets broken up and repurposed. So in terms of making the most of your video spend, that's a great way of m making sure you do that because the the principle is just repurposing it and chopping it up. And like him, like him or not like him, Gary Vee has got a good um, case study of this, of how one of his talks becomes, I think it's 94 pieces of content or something just from a, 15 minute talks all the slides can get made into social graphics uh, little takeaway quotes can be used on stories all of the this principle of taking one big video and breaking it up and making sure you use it in all your different channels is really simple to do because you, you you're going to be making the most of hubspot's automation hubspot's blog hubspot's tracking hubspot's social features so you might as well chop up the video to fill all those places and the other benefits are that it's organic evergreen traffic well into the future um just like it would be any other piece of content but you you're actually enriching it because you've got video in there you've got a lot of it becomes a, a destination from all those channels social soundcloud um email so as, as people come into the core page and then that can become your ranking page and then the other the other part of it is you've also got um, like what Mel said, talked about in her talk of having this bank of content to use for nurturing people. Um, when you're recording videos, generally, if you can keep them as much as possible, evergreen and educational, you'll find uses for them elsewhere in a completely unrelated campaign further down the line. So, um, well, for example, that Love In Bind talk itself was from February 2020. But now it's it's had a use in this scenario, and I can use it in uh, demonstrations of video strategy to clients as well. And it shows a principle of how that content still works and still applies in all different settings. For example, um, another marketing campaign that you do six months down the line could be using content in the nurturing sequence that you recorded last year or six months ago. Because when you're filling that buyer's journey, and I'm working my way up, the funnel campaign to campaign the stuff further down the funnel is there waiting for me to use in nurturing and using video in your email nurturing has great effects so a quick quick google of any of the stats can video in email subject lines improves open rates but then the big one is when you're used to just getting text in emails seeing a video in there so uh, a moving thumbnail of a video ready to play has an enormous click-through rate impact on on email messages so your nurturing workflow is going to be a lot more um, effective. The third tactic um, to make best use of HubSpot video is to provide an on-brand playback experience. Um, I've seen people with HubSpot video um, still go and put, take the video off there, put it on YouTube and embed it on a HubSpot page when there's no need to do that. And all you're doing is encouraging um, your user to go and actually browse some other videos and other people's content. But if you use HubSpot Video or Vidyard, you can get everything centralized onto your own platform. And YouTube, Vimeo, Wistia, they all they all have their benefits and um, use case, which is might be stronger for a certain scenario. But when you're talking about getting people into your content ecosystem, giving them a controlled experience and you knowing what's happening to that um, viewers as they go through your videos. If you want to know how people are interacting with your video content, there's no better way than having your own playback experience. Um, it feels better for the user as well, because if I'm watching a video on the left there, which is on um, 
well, that one's actually our video hub, which is a Vidyard feature, but you could recreate that using HubSpot video by designing a page uh, on HubSpot and, you, and embedding via HubSpot video. I, there's nothing to distract my attention that the publisher of that content hasn't got control of. Whereas if you look on the right hand side, that's my YouTube and I was scanning just a minute ago to see what was on there. You've got football videos, you've got cooking recipes, you've got um, music videos and you've got one um, Digital 22 video. And that, look at the comparison of um, the control that you've got as the content producer, it's, it's so much less on YouTube. Yes, there's other benefits to YouTube, like a bigger audience and SEO and that you want to tap into and the time comes for that. But the other thing is the analytics are so much less powerful as well. So if you can use HubSpot video by either, um, if you have a paid Vidyard, you can make your own, your own YouTube for your own video content via a video hub. You can recreate that with HubSpot video as well by building HubSpot pages that use HubSpot video embeds. So yeah, that's how, that's how to do that. So you can use HubSpot CMS features or if it depends on your HubSpot package, you can just use landing pages and blogs and embed HubSpot videos. Or if you've got the Vidyard packages, um, create a branded video hub and branded sharing pages. And then lastly, um, some learnings from doing this and um, things we see done less well uh, that we want to pass the learnings on and things we've done ourselves in the past, obviously. Uh, I'd start with, if you've got HubSpot Video or Vidyard, lock down the use of embedding. Um, that scenario I just mentioned of some, bit, some people actually downloading the video and then sharing it. Uh, uploading their own files to YouTube and sharing the YouTube link. The, doing that actually n negates any benefits of HubSpot video and, and or Vidyard because if you take that MP4 file or whatever, it, your video file, and then upload it one time to LinkedIn, and then next time you post it in a month, upload it again, you, you're missing out on the tracking benefits, the control of the CTAs and you're proving your ROI of video because every time you do that, it's actually another video to have to track the performance of. But if you keep control of it via a HubSpot um, video embed or a Vidyard embed on one of your controlled pages, either a video hub or um, one that you recreate yourself in the HubSpot CMS, that same video can be shared via the link to the page. So like you'd share the YouTube uh, link you can share your own URL um, but all all data will point back to that same one video second one a bit more tactical uh, in the video itself I think Vidyard yeah, I think it's Vidyard it might be Wistia uh, but one of them anyway has a, has a like a catchphrase of never fade to black um, so never end the video on just a black screen or just your logo always give a CTA and that Another big learning um, that a lot of companies have really benefited from is the CTA of a video nowadays in this era of mass video production doesn't have to be to purchase. The step from a video could just be to visit a web page. So whereas before it used to be a bigger bet doing a video and it'd be to book a meeting, it'd be to um, get a call off a sales rep or even purchase, it could just be come and visit our website is the purpose of, of a video now. And that's how small a step it is. But that is because video is so normalized. Um, and that's what I'm talking about in the third tip here is 2020, we've all been on video, uh, we've all been on video calls, sorry, through all the last year. Um, apps like Snapchat, TikTok, Instagram stories have normalized rough and ready videos. Um, data's cheaper so we can send videos more readily. Uh, access to video, the bar in a good way has been lowered so much in terms of what a quality of a video should be in terms of technical quality. The content still has to be good, that's not that's not changed. But it doesn't have to be 4K HD, it doesn't have to be a professional level production. Um, getting video out there is more important 
than trying to make it look perfect even compared to even just two years ago so if you pick your battles for when you do your produced edited videos and build this funnel a lot massive majority of your videos should just be um either done on a phone as simple as that or a webcam one-to-one -one video like vidyard especially in email messaging especially on thank you pages and landing pages uh, and especially on social feeds because it's doesn't need to be big and glossy and the longer you spend trying to do that the longer it's sat on your video editor's desktop and it's not getting any views or conversions there so that'd be the last bit of getting getting the most out of hubspot video and vidyard is making sure that you're not trying to change the world with the video and get it out there and then finally uh, when we share the slides out there's a bunch of great some of my favorite places um, and then some of ours as well some of our pages as well that you can learn about video so that was my talk Mo. thank you paul and um, i like the idea of adding some tips to the end as well so um, when i do share the slides everyone be sure to check them out um, thank you all. I know we ran over a little bit, but I mean, it was worth it. So, don't, um, Sorry about that. no, don't worry. Um, but thank you for joining us. Hug will be announced shortly as well. So, I hope to see you guys there. And thank you for joining us on this Monday morning. Thank you, everyone.